I want to start with the spectacle we saw on the House floor mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, Republicans taking 15 votes mm -hmm. to elect Kevin McCarthy speaker. I, I, forget the partisanship, Republican versus mm -hmm. Democrat. As a political pro watching that, what did you think? Well, I was sad for the institution. They should have had their act together. They should have gotten it done. And uh, it was sad. It was nothing to be amused by or laugh at or anything. It was sad for the institution. So, so was it worth his doing it? I mean, yes, it, it was kind of ugly and, and not <laughs> particularly dignified, but he did get elected speaker in the end. Well, 15 times. I mean, that's kind of historic. I'd hoped that he would get it done right from the start. What's the challenge? Let's figure this out. Let's get it done. And if not, let's move on to someone else. I, I want to pick up on that. Your daughter, Alexandra, has done a fascinating documentary about you called mm -hmm. Pelosi in the House, which is running right now on HBO Max. And in it, she shows you rounding up votes back in 2018 mm -hmm. to be elected speaker. Mm -hmm. Take a look. I have a good feel for where the votes are in my caucus. Since the election, she has met in person with 67 members or members elect. So how do you get people's votes? Do you just break their knees and make them no. vote you? <laughs> I'm very respectful of people's views. So I want to hear what they are. I want to hear what people have to say. You count votes by listening. So what would you have done if you were McCarthy and you got to the first day of the actual session, you know, you've, you've gone through all of this stuff before, and you didn't have the votes. Well, what? I would have had the votes. I knew I had the votes. I mean, I don't, I had uh, well over 200 votes in the caucus. No, I knew I would have the votes. It was never a question. What happens, Chris, just so you know, is the press makes a big thing of opposition. You know, say, oh, so-and-so said this, and so-and-so said that. But it isn't as, uh, it, it, it's not as, it may sell papers, but it's not really the true picture of what is happening there. McCarthy says that he is going to kick three Democrats off yeah. their committees. Here, yeah. here they are, Adam Schiff, uh, Eric Swalwell, Ilhan Omar. And he says that you set the precedent because in the last session, the Democrats kicked two Republicans, yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, and Paul Gosar off their committees. Didn't you open the door to this? No, uh, we set a precedent, which I hope they will follow. If they have members, as they did, who threatened the security of our members on the committee, were a danger to our members, threatening them, then they would go off the committee. So if they have that accusation about any of our members, let's hear what they have to say. It was clear that their members were a threat to our members. So this is about maintaining safety for our members. The fact that they want to sell, take these people off the committee is more philosoph it's philosophical. During the long vote for speaker, millions of Americans were riveted mm -hmm. by the action on the floor. And they mm -hmm. saw stuff they had never seen before, as you can see up here on the screen now with a speaker talking to Matt Gates, and then uh, another <laughs> member being pulled back. I mean, it was fascinating stuff. The fact is, though, that normally, once the speaker is in charge, that C-SPAN is sharply limited in what it can show. It basically can show the speaker up on the podium. It can show whoever is talking, mm -hmm. which member is talking in the well of the house. There's been a push to change the rules to allow people to see what really is going on on the floor. Do you support that or not? Well, it depends. I, I don't have any objection to transparency and the rest. And when you didn't it, allow it when you were a speaker. But I don't. I think it's supposed to be about following the procedure, the the debate in the Congress. And if there's more uh, opportunity for that, fine. But I don't think it should be uh, um, used as a, a tool against members. I saw you talking to so and so on the floor, and this or that. That that shouldn't be the case. This was remarkable because when, we did, when this was all going on, you have to remember, there were no rules of right. the House. Right. Anything went. And uh, sometimes they said terrible things on the Republican side, but we couldn't challenge it because there were no rules of the House. 
And forgetting whether it's rules or not, for, for a potential speaker or anyone to go up to a member in that manner this just does not bring dignity to the House of Representatives. Let me see if I got this straight, though. Basically, you're saying you like the rules the way they are, follow the official proceedings. If there's something going on in one of the aisles, you don't want that on TV. Well, it depends on what it is. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't want it to curb the uh, inter-party action that might happen on the floor that might be positive. But I, by and large, my view is the more transparency, the better. We now have not one, but two special counsels. Yeah. One investigating President Trump, former President Trump, one investigating current President mm-hmm. Joe Biden for their handling of classified documents. Here's what you had to say about Donald Trump and his problems this summer. Take a look. If the uh, nature of this... Uh of these documents is what appears to be, this is very serious, a very serious. Do you think that classified documents showing up in Joe Biden's office, home, six years after he was vice president, do you think that's also very serious? Well, it depends on the nature of the documents. What I said, as you were listening, was if the nature of these documents is what it appears to be. We don't know. But what we were talking about it was the highest level of classification of right. the documents. And, uh, pre- so I think you have to talk about uh, the uh, procedure. President Biden has said his, his lawyers are finding these and bringing them out. President Trump was obstructing, obstructing access to them. So I think you look at volume, you look at procedure, and then you have to see what the nature of the document, but we don't know what the nature of it is. But you said it perfectly in the beginning. There are two special counsels. Let the, tr- let the truth come forth by the tr- special counsels. But you're talking about the nature of the documents. If the documents turned out to be very sensitive, the Biden documents, that would be very well, serious. Well, you said, don't, I said there, if. Right. Yeah. That would be very serious. Well, we'll see what they are. I don't think that um, having a... Um, briefing on a meeting with somebody, you know, right. we, we used to tease up in an intelligence committee to say, be careful because they're going to stamp classified on the Washington Post. I understand that the cases are very different as yeah. you talk about the, the number of documents, mm-hmm. where they were, the question of transparency and cooperation by the, the two men. You said it very well. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, But as a practical matter, isn't it going to be impossible, even if the facts were to bear out that Trump committed a crime and should be charged, isn't it as a practical matter impossible, given the fact that Biden had documents in his office, had documents in his home? Well, it depends. It depends. And that's what you have a special pride. I think that, again, I said you said it perfectly to begin with. The attorney general asked someone to review to see if a special prosecutor was recommended. He said yes, there is a special prosecutor uh, for Joe Biden, even though the cases are quite different. We don't know until the special prosecutor does all of the investigation. Uh, is it, when you say, is it harder? Um, I, I don't, no, I don't know. It just depends on what comes out of the investigations. 